So here is our latest innovation for the farm. It is a quadcopter drone made by a company based in Raglan, New Zealand called Aeronavix. So this drone is mounted with a standard GoPro and it gives me feedback to my remote and also I can look at the footage afterwards. So this drone will improve efficiency, productivity, safety and our customer can get a live perspective of our farm via Facebook and they can comment on what they think of it. We have identified over 40 applications. Some of these are monitoring stock, counting sheep, monitoring troughs and dry matter measuring. So with the dry matter measuring we don't need to know the actual figure, we just need to know if we are trending up or trending down. So here is a mission of the drone monitoring troughs, checking the hoggets at lambing, drain mapping. So with this particular customer, he has spent $1,600 on getting a private plane in and it would have taken up half his day to get this picture, whereas it took me just 90 seconds. So this is a mission of the drone counting sheep. So it goes out on a pre-planned mission, takes a snapshot of the paddock, automatically crops the paddock, grid references it, and then the software automatically counts the white dots and the data is sent back to your laptop. And we're adapting it so it'll count the smaller white dots and they'll be identified as lambs. We're the beef and lamb demo farm for drones. We're working with Abacus Bio. We're a part of projects over three years to commercialise drones in agriculture. We have an expectation of a $15,000 saving, for example, less full wheelie use and less travel time, and another expectation of a $35,000 increase in productivity gains this year and up to $200,000 in the future. Facebook is the third biggest people group in the world with 1 billion users, and that is why we'd like to give them all a virtual perspective of how their food has been produced. And also, technology will encourage young people into agriculture, which is essential. So here is a picture of the, dr picture of the drone flying. This is the mission planner. So at point two and point three, there are some patches of nodding thistles that need checking regularly, but we don't often get onto it. So that would take 40 minutes on the four-wheeler, and it takes the drone just five minutes, and that is a five and a half k mission. Here is another one. So at point two, there is the cattle shed, and at point three, we had the hoggets on some swedes, so they also need checking regularly. I believe this will be as big for agriculture as the mobile phone. This, this is a bit gimmicky, this slide, but you'll get the general picture. We've got a block here that goes from 400 feet up to 1,100 feet. We've just popped a mob of uh, about 3,200 ewes in there. Now this block in the winter time takes about 40 minutes to head from the house up round. We're not a big farm, but, but up round to have a look for car sheep. And when you've got a mob that size, all you do is drag them into the corner, probably destroy half the dry matter. but. This can get round. If there's no car sheep, then we don't need to go and disturb them. But uh, the camera doesn't really do justice to the topography, um, but it just shows you that uh, it's certainly an improvement in time. Talking before about talking to our contractors, um, this machine, which should go, here we go. This machine, who we, we don't own this machine, but it costs about $2,000 an hour. Um, and by taking this video footage, we can go and have a chat to him, not when he's working, but out of season, and just talk about how we can be more efficient, and then there's an obvious thing there happening where the machine's not operating at, at full capacity, and he's got auto steer on that machine, but he's not using it. So that's probably costing us an extra $400 an hour. Also, he's not back, he shouldn't back up, because there's often vehicles or trucks or something behind there, so we want to improve that safety or a kid flying a drone or something like that. 
If you want to um, go and buy a drone now, things that you can actually do if you pull it out of a box, this comes from Raglan with a lot of technical support. So you can go out and you can visually check stock, um, you can go around at lambing rounds, check waterways, um, Mark's done some deer recovery and also a bit of search and rescue work. We are just about in the final stages of being able to count sheep, which will progress on to counting deer and, and cattle, which is pretty exciting. But the biggie is measuring dry matter. And for us, as I said before, the crucial driver of our business is days to slaughter, not lambing percentage, not a whole lot of other things, but days to slaughter. Lambing percentage is there, but it's about seventh on the list for us now for what drives our profit. And so we have real trouble in that spring period being able to tell whether we're at 900 kgs of dry matter, 1,200 or 1,400. And once we're at 1,300, we're struggling to hang on to our farm. And so as soon as that grass goes reproductive, our lamb growth rates drop about 150 grams a day. Dairy farmer gets to see it in the vat the next day. We don't. And I think we're about two weeks too late um, managing that whole process in the spring and I think we only get it right about two years um, out of five and so if we can get a drone measuring the dry matter flying our farm every two to three days then I believe that's going to bring our kill date further forward. It's about 3,000 bucks a day for us for that every day we can shift that day forward and already our average kill date is 74 days um, ahead of the average which equates to 222,000 on in our business, so it's it's pretty exciting. Bit of innovation that we use on the farm. I think I'm running out of time, so I'll just talk about the one at the top. And there's a lot of blame shifting going on in the meat industry, and and I think we need to take responsibility for our own businesses. Um, stop looking at other people. I think yeah, certainly our processes do an excellent job. When I go through the plants, I am super impressed with how our lamb is being uh, processed and the marketing side. I don't understand a lot about marketing, I just hear what I hear at Farm Discussion Group. But certainly I know, and if we go back to our results, if we start to look at our own business and innovate, then we can have some exciting uh, results. And we plan to probably purchase another five farms in the next 10 years uh, through equity partnerships with no daring uh, contact at all. Um, the spray and pray technique is, uh, most of you probably know about it, but we've developed it on intensive land and that's where we go in and we glyphosate off a paddock and then we take the spray boom off, whether that's the helicopter or with, with the tractor, and we broadcast our brassicas straight onto the grass so you can have the sheep there in the morning, swedes growing by night time. Costs us $206 a hectare, helicopter is about $256 a hectare, and we've averaged 19 tonne crops over the last um, uh, seven years, so we're growing our, our winter dry matter for a cent a kg uh, of dry matter. And also for us, for Philippa and I who are just on the farm, um, we can do that operation of about 20 hectares in about five to six hours compared to possibly seven to eight days if you were ridging it or old conventional ways. No Australians in the audience? wasn't a good end result for us. But this is um, what we believe we're doing. I used to sail yachts in, in Tianao, and we would turn um, 20 knots of wind into nine knots of boat speed. And these babies are turning 20 knots of wind speed into 47 knots. Thank you very much. Sort of happy to take questions. <laughs> um, two reasons is we did that, the first demonstration side of building, the, the CAA have given us a lot of dispensation on farm and so um, we can do that but if we would have an accident in an auditorium like this or even outside, um, they would shut us down. So we have to watch our P's and Q's with them at the moment. So, uh, but Mark may give a wee demonstration later, but I'm not sure, he's got a broken arm. Neighbours are great. Um, the, 
couple of issues is we have to, when we fly that direct mission, we're actually flying over the neighbour's place and we have to respect their privacy. That's one of the big issues with, with drones, is respecting people's privacy. Mark's had a lot of especially uh, senior people come up to him and um, accuse him of stuff that, that he just hasn't done. So we have to manage that. And there's been a lot of publicity um, from our farm and that's good because once he starts saving a few lives in search and rescue, then, then I think that will just dissipate. Um, yes, the neighbours are all talking, um, but this is one innovation where I think they're right behind it and pretty supportive. Um, 3Ks by manual control, but really it's unlimited um, once you go autonomous, hooked up to GPS control. And so effectively we've got a half an hour flight time with that. At 100Ks an hour you can go a long way. So technically we can send it to town and pick up a part for them for, or a bit of pizza as you might have seen on TV one night. And Aeronavics who build these machines, they're talking about having these flying for 90 minutes by the uh, end of the year. But most of our flights are only about 15 minutes. You can, on our size of property, 466 hectares, you can accomplish most tasks. There's one of a, a farmer that we're working with, he spends 19 days a year checking for electric fence faults. And so um, he's looking forward to having one of these and I think he's gonna talk to Gallagher, who are at the back there, about putting sensors in the line, sending the drone out to, to spot where is fencing, try and reduce that commuting time. Yes, the day after we ordered from uh, Mexico, we ordered from the US, it came from Mexico and it had Made in China written on, we, we, we learned about aeronavics and the problem with the first drone was just zero technical support and so without a local chap that was pretty techno savvy in, in helping Mark through that process, I don't think our first drone would have been out of the box. And so this um, machine is top of the line um, Aeronavics have been producing drones for the movie industry over a number of years and so um, price 15 grand but we think straight up it's worth about 50 to our business um, and I think the figures with technology are looking pretty good in the future. Yeah we certainly have tried that and I think our two friends over there, certainly in our business I don't think we'll be purchasing another heading dog and um, yes it does. But with electronics you can add different sensors or noise making things in the future. So. Really I think the privacy thing is just a public perception and I'm not sure where that will head but once they have you know positive news about that and at the field days John Key was coming there and he avoided these like the plague because of the GSBC thing and that's just straight straight um, perception there needs to be a lot of regulation because you know CAA entry level for a helicopter or, or airplane has been prohibitive for people to purchase but entry level for one of these might be eight or nine hundred dollars. So if you have someone with a few beers around some hand gliders, it could be devastating, devastating for us. So we're right behind the regulation and trying to talk to them about the economic benefit, but really challenging to get to um, to the policy makers. And so we're just talking to frontline and, and CA at this stage aren't prepared to make a decision and, until there's an, probably an accident. So um, yeah, looking forward to that regulation. Uh, I've got a few Cantabrian jokes, but I'm not going to use them. Um, don't understand the question. Land's cheaper in South, and it's where, where family is. Um, good farming land, but I fly over here, and it's great up here as well. So I think you guys do really well. So, have I answered your question? Farming deer. Oh, what? Sorry, farming here, farming deer. Um, True story, I'm scared of them. 
Um, when I was a young fella, I was feeding silage out to a deer and a big stag put his hoof on the middle of the bonnet and I sort of made a decision then never to... But you've sorted th those issues out. So. Pardon? Uh, I'm passionate about sheep. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I like doing. 